Hi, this is John with Website Hosting Pros, and today I want to talk about VPS hosting. So, VPS, I uh, put that up here, stands for a virtual private server. And so, hosting companies put your website files on a server. And so, a server is where those files are stored, and that's where you can manage those files, and what makes those files um, available so that your website is visible on the internet and so hosting companies usually offer several different types of hosting uh, that you put onto their servers let's go take a look at some of the different types here this is um, a2 hosting this is the company that I use and that I strongly recommend and if we go to their hosting options you can see that they have web hosting which is typically um, referred to as shared hosting WordPress hosting, VPS hosting, which is what we're talking about today, dedicated hosting, and reseller hosting. So I'm not going to get too much into all the other options other than to compare um, typical shared web hosting to VPS hosting to dedicated hosting. So with dedicated hosting, you have the entire server to yourself. You don't share it with anybody. It is completely yours to use. Um, it is also very expensive uh, because of the fact that you have the entire server to use for yourself. Shared web hosting is kind of the other end of the spectrum. Shared web hosting is where on that server you are sharing that server space with lots of other users, users, usually dozens if not hundreds of other users that are all sharing that server physical space. So virtual private server hosting is kind of in between shared web hosting and dedicated hosting. Virtual private server hosting is where you are sharing the physical server space with other users but your space has been carved out so that you have your own resources that you do not share with any other users. And so to try to make a visual for this, um, this didn't come out <laughs> super great, but hopefully it'll make sense. So th the big box, the big rectangle, is an example of a physical server. Okay, so you have a physical server over here, and we have a physical server over here. This physical server is trying to show an, exa the ex an example of how regular shared hosting or web hosting, shared web hosting, is that you have and these smaller boxes inside the server represent different users. And so you have all these users that are on this server. Now with virtual private server, the big server is partitioned out as well to all these different users. And so the, again, there's multiple users on this one server. And so in that way, they're similar. One of the biggest differences, however, is how the resources of that server are used. And the resources being, uh, that can be everything from the memory, to the disk speed, to the size, to the space, uh, etc. But so you have all these different resources. I like to kind of think of it analogy, like think of this like say maybe an apartment building and you have all these different apartments in this apartment building. Same thing over here, apartment building, all these different apartments in the apartment building. And then the resources, using the apartment analogy, the resources are like your electricity, maybe your uh, TV, cable or phone service, uh, if you have gas, your water, etc. Those are the different resources. Well, with shared web hosting, those resources all enter the server or the apartment building, and then they are split out and shared amongst all the different users. And so part of the you know potential problem that you may have with shared web hosting is you may have, let's say, call this, let's um, say this user, this apartment in the building or this user on the server, he may be a resource hog. 
Okay, so if we think about the apartment uh, analogy, he may use, you know, uh, all the hot water. He may have, you know, things that are, you know, uh, electricity hogs. They're just using electricity all the time. And so he's using a lot of the resources, which mean all the other apartment uh, people living in all these other apartments, they may have less hot water. They may have less electricity. Uh, because of what one or a few people are doing. Because these resources just get split out among all the people that are living in these apartments. Or again, going back to the server, these resources are shared across this server. And so these different users on, that, on this shared server, you may have a few that are resource hogs, which then affect all the other users on this server. And so that's kind of the downside, uh, a potential downside to shared web hosting. Um, the big upside to shared web hosting is the cost tends to be much lower. And so it's a good place for you to start if you're just getting online and maybe can't afford um, higher level uh, hosting right now. Um, let's compare that to a virtual private server type hosting situation. So again, you have the big physical server. It gets partitioned out for all the different users. But instead of the resources being shared, kind of a first come first serve, and being split among all the users, every user is essentially partitioned off and isolated from their neighbors, from the other users on here. And so they have their own resources they are allocated just to them. And so they don't have to worry about other users on that server potentially slowing down their websites um, because they're overusing the resources on that server. This user has their own resources allocated just to them. And so that is a huge advantage in you know, keeping your websites fast, keeping them up, keeping them secure, etc. Again, when you're in a shared environment, it's possible you could have a user... Um, that gets a virus onto the server that affects everybody else. And so everyone is then affected by what happened. Over here, on a VPS uh, situation, you are partitioned out. And so maybe your neighbor next door gets a virus onto his VPS partition, but it doesn't affect you. Maybe your neighbor is just sending all kinds of traffic and you know, using up a ton of resources, but it does not affect you because you're over here all by yourself. And so that's the beauty of um, virtual private server hosting is you're not sharing resources. You're uh, going to be much more secure. Uh, now you are going to pay more for that. So if we go back to um, looking at these different hosting options at A2, you know, shared web hosting, again, it tends to be the lowest cost, you know, as low as $2.99 a month. Now you can get, you know, shared hosting with more features, so the monthly price goes up. But even the most expensive shared web hosting option is $12.99 a month. Now, if we go to manage VPS hosting, you can see that jumps up pretty dramatically. It, almost, it basically triples to basically $49 or $40 a month for their lowest cost and can go as high as uh, $68 uh, a month. So that can be pretty steep if you're just starting out. So VPS hosting may not be for you if you're just starting out. You may want to stare, start with shared web hosting. And just as a personal example, when I started with A2 hosting, and I had used other hosting companies previous to A2 hosting, um, but because I was having trouble with speed and security issues, I ultimately switched over to A2 hosting and have stayed with them. But I started with their shared web hosting, their drive plan, because that's the first uh, level of shared hosting that allows you to have multiple websites. And uh, I made lots of websites uh, for myself, for clients, and uh, ultimately bought a second drive plan. But then decided I really just needed to go ahead and switch over to a managed VPS hosting. And that's what I have now. So VPS hosting, um, most comp most hosting companies are going to offer two different types. Managed VPS hosting, 
and unmanaged VPS hosting. Now, A2 has a great uh, article on their website, you know, should you choose between, you know, helping you decide should you choose managed or unmanaged VPS hosting. What's the difference? Well, the biggest difference comes down to what you, uh, what the hosting company provides for you and what the versus what the hosting company does not provide for you and you are expected to provide yourself, okay? So manage VPS hosting, you have a lot of additional resources, okay? So the hosting company is gonna provide all these things free of charge. Support, 20 and A2, they do you know 24-7, 365 support via chat, phone, email tickets, etc. They're gonna configure the servers, they're gonna maintain the servers, they're gonna maintain, they're gonna make sure the servers are secure, they're gonna do automatic upgrades, they're gonna scan for malware and much more. So that is managed. Um, so you are gonna pay more for managed hosting, um, but they're doing everything for you on the back end. The nice thing about the managed VPS at A2 hosting is that they include cPanel. And so if you're used to um, cPanel, uh, the control panel, then it makes managed VPS hosting very, very easy. Now, unmanaged VPS, well, let's go back real quick and you can see, as you would expect with, you know, managed VPS hosting, you're going to pay more per month. This must be some little pricing because um, these, are, these are higher than what we were just looking at. Um, but it's certainly more. Now, if you go to unmanaged VPS, you can see it's much less, right? Much less per month. However, you have very few additional features, okay? You do not get support on unmanaged VPS hosting. They really only provide the physical infrastructure, the, you know, the server, the, your, your initial installation on the server. And they will manage some hardware issues and uptime, but you're responsible for everything else. You're responsible for installing your own control panel, any scripts that you want to use, uh, installing and managing your databases, software upgrades, maintenance, your own security. So you basically need to do it yourself. So in a lot of ways, it's almost like having a, a dedicated server. So virtual, if you're needing to, you know, have more security, more features, faster service, uh, be able to have your websites handle uh, more traffic, then a virtual private server is definitely uh, a great option for you. Um, and then you just need to decide, do you want to do managed or unmanaged? If you do unmanaged, you need to be able to have the technical skills and expertise to manage that uh, server for yourself. Uh, if not, I, which I do not, <laughs> so I have managed uh, VPS hosting with A2. So I hope this helps you uh, understand better what virtual private VPS hosting is and the differences between managed and unmanaged. And obviously there's quite a bit of price difference there as well. But if you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more updates, and uh, I hope you all have a great day.